most of you probably don't realize is that one of these components that are designed for the car uh, also has to correspond with a lot of other components. So when you start developing new ones, you kind of have to go back and also change a lot of things for um, just other parts to make them work with each other and to make them really be able to attach to each other and all of that. And I also don't really show this in the video because, you know, it just takes up time and everything. So really usually when I am, um, yeah, when I'm usually designing components and everything and I end up with like a five minute speed art video, you can basically think that there's about three hours of designing in there. And um, then that designing it does it's not just on that single component that I'm developing at the moment, but also a lot of things around that surrounding that thing and um, yeah, just th things in general. And also sometimes I look back at something because I started working on this car about half a year ago, and um, in that period of time I also learned a lot still about cars and also new things came out, so I also went back and changed some stuff up. So. Um, I figured it might be worth it to um, actually show you guys what one of these changes that I've what I've altered on the car, and um, yeah, let's get into it. So all the engine basically is is an air, air pump. So it sucks air in here, and then it goes through the cylinder head. It gets burned, and in the the in the combustion chamber, fuel gets added and everything, and then it gets blown out of the exhaust pipes. So um, basically if you want an efficient engine you want to make it as efficiently as possible into pumping as much air through the complete system as possible. And more air means more oxygen and more oxygen also means more fuel you can uh, uh, add to every single combustion that takes place. Which means that every single combustion will also become more efficient because you can produce more power from every single turn of the engine. So therefore you would also kind of need less... Um, less volume and everything so if you would have you can if you have a, a good breathing engine that is smaller uh, then you can basically outperform a larger engine that is pr pretty restricted in its airflow and everything so basically I have done a couple of updates to the cylinder heads and also added some other new things and uh, yeah that is basically what I wanted to show this video so imagine that the car is driving at let's say 200 kilometers an hour and the air uh, if you saw like uh, if you have seen like a scene of previous video the cockpit will be sitting right here and this will kind of be a roof scoop that is sitting uh, uh, above the driver's head so this will then be, will be uh, taken in air at very high velocity and the first thing you would need to know about this air and uh, is that air has energy and usually when air has uh, velocity it also has very low pressure and this energy of velocity and pressure can be kind of um, yeah there is a direct co correlation between the two so let's say at high speed there is air coming in so it has very low pressure but high velocity then it suddenly needs to fill up this whole space of uh, yeah just this whole volume and it needs to fill it up with air so that uh, because it has now a lot more space the air needs to expand it will drop in uh, fall it will drop in velocity but instead of that, um, but it will then increase its air pressure. So this basically will get a ram air effect, meaning that uh, it will be higher than atmospheric air pressure in this air intake manifold when you're driving at high speeds. So you will kind of get a turbocharging effect on um, this whole system here when you're driving at high speed. So that is the first thing. The second thing that I did was that I kind of uh, changed the cylinder head itself. In, sh in basically the shape of it you can see that these uh, air intake ports they they used to be kind of very close to each other but I now um, divided them to have equal spacing between every one of them so there is no longer like two pairs and then two pairs and then two pairs they're now just six in a row and the way it looks is actually that uh, as if it would be for like a six cylinder engine but this is just for a three cylinder bank cylinders so um, yeah, the first thing that I did is I basically separated them a little bit more and the reason why is because if you go back to this assembly is that you can see that this air intake tracks, um, just these trumpet-like shapes are, um, because they're further apart from each other, they, their volume could be a little bit larger than they were before and um, the reason why you want these on the car is because this shape right here can take in more air than if it would be just this cylinder here and also at the same time you can see that the here right here is um, like a, a regulating arm 
which will be attached to like a hydraulic pump or of some of some sort with the hydraulic arm attached to it and this will allow me to kind of um, move these trumpets up and down to create variable intake runner lengths and this could be helpful because um, if you could kind of change the length of the intake so where the air comes in and where it eventually reaches the uh, combustion chamber you can kind of create uh, some sort of um, I don't know what the English word is but you can kind of create some sort of turbocharging effect where um, it would kind of create some sort of frequency at which it will be very efficient at sucking down that air at various RPMs of the uh, engine so at let's say at high RPM you would want a shorter intake and at low RPM you might want a longer one to create more of a suction going on and this varies with engines and RPM ranges and all of that so it, it would require some testing to see at which RPM um, the, the the best length that will create the more, most efficient power and everything so that is uh, also a step that we have taken the next thing that you can also see that for every single air intake port so for all of these six air intake ports they uh the, these two go to one single cylinder so it's not like there are six uh, cylinders in here this is just a v6 but also one of them is basically as large as a regular air intake would be for one cylinder so you can get twice the air of a regular situation in uh, the combustion chamber of regular that a regular engine would be able to so that is also basically a huge step up because more air as i said the air the engine is an air pump more air means more fuel to burn and that also equates to more efficient horsepower and that more air also probably needs a lot more fuel so um that's why you can also see that i have dual fuel injectors for every cylinder um that for every single um i have a single injector for every single intake port so per cylinder there will be two uh, fuel injectors so it, it has dual fuel injection per cylinder so that is one thing that we also added to the system and also if you would look at um, just the the valve mechanism itself as you can see there is no camshaft sitting here and all of the valves are basically controlled by pneumatically uh, pneumatic actuators that open and close the valves this is uh, a Koenigsegg system called free valve so if you want to have some more information about that I really suggest that you go look that up because that is probably the biggest innovation in com internal combustion engines for the like let's say the last 20 30 years and um, I also have just one single spark plug in the middle right there so but what these basically do is because a, cam a camshaft of course is just locked to a single pattern of um, just like to a single pattern of yeah basically the way uh, uh, the, the the valve can move so basically it looks like this so it's closed and then it gets opened and then of course it drops down and then it gets uh, closed again but with this free valve uh, numerically actuated and numerically means air uh, air actuated so with air pressure it gets pushed down or pulled up um, it means that you have really just better control overall of just that engine so instead of it having some sort of a mount pattern as soon as you want that um, that valve to open it will kind of go straight up and then it will stay there for as long as you want it to and then you can close it up again so all of this extra space is just all of the air that you can get into the system and that also means that you can burn this much more fuel so all of that means that if you would want a higher horsepower engine that you could do that but also at the same time if I would want to I could uh, still have sufficient horsepower if I just shut down half the cylinder so I could maybe run this engine on two cylinders and uh, still have uh, sufficient horsepower so um, that is something to make it more efficient and more environmentally green if you would uh, yeah that is something that uh, you focus on so that is uh, the kind of the duality of the system also another thing that you could do is that you could individually uh, right and left select which of the uh, air intake or exhaust for valves you want to open at whatever time you want to so let's say you just want to open the left valve instead of having and close the right valve means that you can also have two different exhaust systems that uh, serve different purposes so at as you can see on every single cylinder on the light on the left hand side you could see that there is a uh, exhaust manifolds that is kind of a equal length racing exhaust type system which has uh, as I said equal length uh, uh, runners um, and all of that so that you would create 
some kind of suction and everything and if you would want to see how equal length exhaust systems work then i suggest you also look up another video of that and on the right hand side you can see that there is just uh, as short as possible uh, the uh, exhaust manifold runners and everything and the reason why this is a beneficial system is because a, a car is basically most uh, toxic to the environment when it's cold when nothing is yet on running temperatures and all of that so these um, the, a catalytic converter in a car is basically transmitting all of these toxic uh, gases into um, more friendly but still greenhouse gases but into less toxic to the environment into the gases that are less, less toxic to the environment so um, in a cold start situation you could basically run the complete exhaust manifold ex all the exhaust gases through uh, this manifold into a catalytic converter that will be sitting right here and um, as soon as the engine is warmed up then it will be producing way less toxic emissions and you pr probably really don't need that uh, catalytic converter anymore and at that point you can just say like okay uh, we will now run all of the exhaust gases through this racing port or maybe even at the same time so um, as soon as you select that you want the to use the racing exhaust manifold system then um, we basically have like a straight pipe without a catalytic converter and all of those uh, gases can be straightly uh, transmitted into the air and a that would sound amazing and b there is no uh, restriction on the exhaust gases so that also really helps to make the, the engine breathe better and as I said the engine is basically an air pump and the more air you can move the more horsepower you will make so without that back pressure of um, that catalytic converter that would also mean that uh, we would again make more horsepower at the end so that is basically uh, what I did with the um, so that is basically everything that I did that has to do something with the cylinder heads and just the air intake just to make the engine a better breathing, uh, better moving air pump that is more efficient in just moving the air through the complete system and all of that. And also at the same time, let's say you want to drive comfortably and um, or maybe do some spirited driving or and have nice sounds and everything then I think that it would be pretty cool to open both exhaust valves and because the different uh, length in the exhaust manifolds you would probably get an engine that sounds way more like uh, a V12 instead of a V6 because those uh, combustions will kind of uh, enter the atmosphere at a different speed because this exhaust length, uh, um, this exhaust runner is way shorter than this one as you can see so that would probably sound also pretty amazing and at the same time this engine is also developed to run at high rpm if you can see that right now yep because as you can see the um the crank stroke is very small and the piston diameter the, the piston bore is pretty big so i believe it's uh i have to look it up i wrote it down somewhere but i believe it's like a 1 to 14 1 to 2 uh border stroke ratio and this means that the engine will probably spin at a high rpm and that combined with it not having a camshaft and no drives or belts or anything attached to it for the camshafts means also that it has less restrictions and all of that so it will be an engine that is really um also responding quickly because also with uh, that is something that i haven't mentioned and i will mention that a couple of minutes so um it will respond quickly it will ref very high and also it will ref very quickly so it won't really take a lot of time for it to reach max rpm when you're in neutral or in a low gear so uh, that would be a lot of fun and also with these uh free valve um cooling sack actuators you can basically throttle with uh yeah just with these air insects with the the um air insect valves in, in combination with the fuel um with the fuel injection and everything you can so you don't need a throttle body you don't need like individual throttle throttle bodies for every cylinder you can just do that with a computer basically and uh, you would have direct response as soon as you open up the gas and it will just you will just as soon as you hit the, the accelerator you could with a computer just send a message through these uh, valves that they would need to open longer and for 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 a uh, longer time and also more open and you could um, tell these injectors to inject more fuel into the system and just in a split second like that you would have maximum rpm maximum horsepower and um, it will just make for a very very efficient air pump and engine and all of that at the same time so that is basically everything that i did in these past couple of days 
to uh, ju just give the whole cylinder head and everything on the engine a complete overhaul. Next up will be um, just a little bit more of I already have like the cooling circuits and everything in the engine, but just basically the plumbing. So all the attachments for the not just the wiring, but also um, just the lubrication channels and engine cooling and all of that. So also the fuel rails need to be attached still to the fuel cell that sits somewhere around here. And um, yeah, basically if those things are done, then I will be completed on the engine, and then I will move on to the gearbox to make some gearbox selectors and everything to put it to actually be able to put it in gear. And I also need to make a pedal box still and then the interior and then I will start on the body uh, and I also need to make some heat exchangers for all the electric components that will be on the car so that is basically everything that is up next so um, yeah that is everything for this video thanks for watching please also leave a like subscribe also let me know in the comments if I can do anything better if I haven't mentioned anything or um, if I'm just not doing something right and also at the same time please keep in mind that I am a 19 year old kid with a hobby and I'm not doing this professionally or anything and um, that is basically it so thanks for watching please leave a like also subscribe and uh, I'll see you guys in another video I'm out